Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on the Arrowverse. Today we're going to be talking about a new deadline report that talks about the CW and its changing programming slate, which is extremely relevant right now, considering that we're thinking about the future of the Arrowverse, including shows like Superman Lois and Stargirl. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. By the time this video goes up, I would have done a members live stream. This is a new thing that we are bringing to the channel. To participate in such live streams, all you need to do is become a member by clicking the join button, which is down below next to the subscribe button. By supporting the channel, this is just a way of me giving back to you so that you are able to join the channel and actually be in a live stream with me so this will hopefully be a somewhat regular thing every once in a while but for now let's go ahead and get into today's topic so the deadline article will be linked in the description below it is titled the cw widens programming scope to include sitcoms and procedurals begins testing outside studio deals and so we're going to be reading through this article because there's a lot of information here it's a pretty crammed article and be hitting through the main stuff but I do apologize if I get through some stuff that isn't as interesting but I feel like it all has to be said and then I'll give you my thoughts and opinions on what's going on and how this impacts the future of Superman Lois and the other Arrowverse shows so it goes like this by the time next our media groups long in the works 75 percent acquisition of the CW finally closed earlier this month it was the height of pitch season when broadcast networks buy scripted projects to develop as new series for the next season. On the morning of August 15th, deal announcement Nexstar Toppers said that under the new ownership, the CW would be going for a broader and cheaper programming, including syndicated fare acquisitions with the goal to make the network profitable by 2025. So, let me just briefly explain what is going on here. So basically, Nexstar took over the CW. They have now 75% of the CW with Warner Bros. and CBS actually having the last 25% split between them. They are still involved in the productions, but mainly Nexstar is in control because they are the majority stakeholder in the CW as of right now. And so with this, they announced that they want to go towards more broader and cheaper programming. That means buying... TV shows that have aired before and just re-showing them so that people would come to the channel and just give them viewers basically, but also making programming cheaper, so doing non-fiction shows which would be more like quiz and game shows, things like that that people watch in the day just like without paying too much attention. Okay, so since then, sources tell Deadline that the CW Brass has reached out to the creative community including taking agency meetings to lay out their buying strategy going forward and to tell everyone that the network is open for business. On the original scripted programming side, in addition to the CW's signature genre shows and teen soaps, which the network intends to keep doing, just not as many, it plans to broaden its slate by adding procedurals and other older skewing dramas, as well as half-hour comedies including multi-camera sitcoms, the overall message was, bring us what you would have brought to CW before, but also bring us what you would have brought to us in the past. This chimes with Nexstar's Brass's comments that the demographic focus of the CW will change over time, indicating that new owners would be emphasizing the older skewing linear network versus digital, where the vast majority of younger viewers watch the CW shows. Next, our president and Tom Carter noted that while CW's current slate of shows like Riverdale, All American, and The Flash target viewers in the 1834 demographic range, the average CW linear viewer is 58 years old. So let's just go through a couple of these things that I just talked about. So, yes, they've reached out to the creative community and they are telling people what their strategy is going forward. They are going around this a different way. As I just mentioned, you know, shows like The Flash and Riverdale and stuff, they have a demographic target of around 18 to 34. That is the audience that they are trying to reach, and they have successfully done that. But like the article suggests, most young viewers watch the CW shows online and digitally, 
rather than necessarily showing up bang on at the right time and watching it on the CW live on TV. But to the new owners, they don't really recognize that as something super impactful as is really big TV ratings because they want to go back to an older style of TV and say, okay, look at the ratings. Look, we've done really good and this is what we want to do. So let's go back to an older model where we can try and get more people to view it by making older skewing content that would be shown in the day that is cost effective, is cheaper, and we don't have to focus too much on shows like The Flash and The Arrowverse shows because they're more expensive and most people don't actually watch them live. So we don't get the physical proof to advertisers and people working with the CW that the show is working, no. In fact, they are very scared of digital, it seems. Well, that being Nexstar, of course. So they want to see those good ratings and they want to cater to the overall CW average age demographic for an entire day. And that age is more like into the 50s. And that's because 50 year olds are at home, they turn on the TV, they watch it whilst they're cooking or whilst they're taking a nap on the sofa or something. And they want to actually get into that business which I think is a big big mistake and I think pretty much mostly all of you guys will agree with me and what is interesting and what I really want to talk about in today's video is this one paragraph so on the original scripted programming side in addition to CW signature genre shows and teen soaps the network in fact intends to keep doing so that is confirmation that they are still doing Arrowverse style shows, Riverdale style shows, but just not as many. So they have officially said via this deadline article that they're going to continue with shows like the Arrowverse, but they're going to not create so many new shows, and it plans to broaden its slate by adding procedurals and also sitcoms to the network. Now, I'm not against procedurals and sitcoms being added, I'm against non-fiction game shows being added that you can just randomly play in the day but you're also going to play in the night. I think that is a terrible creative decision. I think it's rubbish. I think it's the easiest choice that they could have made in terms of saving money. But I think sitcoms are good and I actually really like TV sitcoms quite a lot, especially the ones in the early 2000s like How I Met Your Mother. Imagine if they created a new How I Met Your Mother for a new decade. I would be totally into that and also procedurals and older skewing dramas that's fine with me like it should be cool like I do like procedurals every now and again however I'm very happy to say that they are still doing their signature genre shows so Arrowverse shows and different things related to the kind of 18 to 34 demographic range because that is where the Arrowverse shows lie and this signifies that the Arrowverse isn't going to die. It isn't going to die anytime soon. It will continue and shows like Superman and Lois will continue and potential new shows could be added but just not as many as they've previously been developing in the past and that's why you've seen a bunch of the shows being cancelled and you're seeing them actually not picking up some shows that are Arrowverse related so it puts into question really the future of something like Justice U that was announced a while ago is it really going to be that beneficial for the CW? I'm not entirely sure, so I'm not 100% confident that they are going to pick up Justice U for series. However, something more mainstream like a Cyborg show or a Flash spin-off or a Green Arrow spin-off or any other big characters that you can think of like a Wonder Woman TV show, I think Nexstar would totally be into that. And so maybe if it was Nexstar who was the owner at the time, maybe Wonder Girl would still be around. That would be my guess because I think they would see it as significant and as something that could garner attention, especially within the CW signature type of show that they have been talking about here. So what do you guys think of that? Let me know in the comments down below. Are you excited to see that the Arrowverse is probably going to continue? Are you still a little bit worried? I think I'm definitely still worried because this new leadership, again, doesn't really know what it's doing. It's just coming in with a business style of thinking and they are not thinking creatively. But there is a couple more sentences that I want to go through 
just before we end this video because the article goes on it says the network's new programming strategy is looking to embrace these older linear views and trying to expand that pool the network has done that occasionally with specials such as the Walton's holiday movies as well as the Critics Choice Awards shout out Critics Choice Awards I'm a member of the Critics Choice so yeah I support Critics Awards that's definitely something that I like but on the acquisition side, the CW is also expected to go for broader shows, including procedural dramas. For years, the network has been supplementing its originals with mainly Canadian and UK scripted series. So that means that they're going to be buying shows that are previously aired, especially ones that are procedurals because they think that will do good on the network. And so the CW's unscripted strategy is not changing the network, has been betting on broad shows such as Penn and Teller and the world's funniest animals and there will be more of that going forward that is what i'm not so much into so I'm not very hyped about that but at least they're not kind of changing their strategy and adding in tons more one final paragraph that i want to actually go over and actually read is this following nexar's acquisition previous 50 50 owners paramount global and warner bros discovery each retained 12.5 percent shares their broadcast focus studios, CBS Studios and Warner Bros. TV respectively have been the CW's exclusive scripted series suppliers to date. That will remain in place for the 2022 to 2023 season as the vast majority of programming it has already been spoken for. Beyond that, Nextar will have the opportunity to extend that partnership with the studios. Carter said, but noted that the situation is very much in flux. The company's executive have indicated that the CW would be open to outside suppliers going forward. So this is a big deal. That means that they're not just going to be working with Paramount and Warner Bros. They're going to be working with other studios that can be developing projects for them at presumably a lower cost to produce shows that potentially CW wouldn't have created in the past. So I would say that is definitely a positive thing. I would say it would be a negative thing if Nexstar chooses to not work with Warner Bros. TV and CBS Studios in the future because they create obviously some great shows. Warner Bros. TV specifically, they are the ones that produce the Arrowverse shows. So I would be totally against them actually going completely the other way and ignoring Warner Bros TV which I don't think they're going to do so I think for now we are safe but it's still a little bit worrying but that pretty much does it for this video guys thank you guys so much for watching if you did enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment it would really help out the channel also subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any future videos but for now you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video and I'll catch you guys later goodbye